Fire Captain Tim Spencer has spent 21 years as a firefighter with the city of Reno. And on his off time, he serves as a firefighter with the Nevada National Air Guard, which has taken him multiple times to the war-torn Middle East and other parts of the world. For Tim, life has always meant service. When I was a little kid, you know, my family, my family owned a meat business. Okay, and I got really tired of that. I started cutting meat when I was seven years old. <laughs> and um, it was good, you know, I had a lot of exposure to the public and that was the fun part of it. But, you know, it was a hard business and... Um, like working at a butcher? It was, it was a small family-owned meat market, yeah. And um, had some good times there, but, you know, I watched my dad go through it six days a week, se seven days a week, he'd get Sundays off. You know, and Sunday was the day to do the book work and then we'd go and do a deep cleaning in the store. So it was really a seven day a week type job. Uh, a yeah. good friend of mine's dad drove a ladder truck and we used to go down to the firehouse and visit him and it just seemed really fun and exciting and his dad loved his job and you know I, I just had an interest in that. I left for the Air Force right after my 18th birthday and I signed up as a what they call a fire protection specialist. It's a firefighter. Right now, I'm training to be a battalion chief. It's really rewarding because people call 911 when things go wrong, and we fix things. It's fun to come to work and not know where you're going to end up. You know, sometimes you'll show up to work and you think it's going to be a normal day, and you'll be on a strike team heading to Los Angeles. There's some times that you're on a call and disturbing things happen. If we've been on a difficult call involving you know, pediatric patient or something like that, or a particularly bad car wreck or an aircraft crash, you know, things like that that are extremely disturbing. We talk about it amongst ourselves and kind of cope with it. That's, you don't bring that stuff home to your family. Especially as captains, you gotta, um, you gotta kind of be the big brother or the, the dad that gets everybody to talk about it because you don't want to hold that stuff in, you know. And you don't want to be the tough guy all the time and act like it doesn't bother you. It builds up. Does that make it so that with your team or with your crew, you, you kind of feel like you have, you have to feel like you have a close bond? Oh, yeah. Yeah, trust is everything. You do. And, and, you know, you live together. It's like a second family in the fire station. And we really depend on each other a lot, especially in emergency situations. You know, one thing that helps you kind of cope with um, the dangers around you is you're really focused on the outcome. You know, you try to just concentrate on fixing the problem and not worry too much about what's going on around you. The civilian fire service is very much like the military. When I left active duty, I transferred over to the Nevada Air National Guard. You know, the paramilitary structure, the brotherhood, it was a real easy transition. It's just a, basically a uniform change. It is a component of the military. So you, you have guns involved. You've got to do weapons qualifications and all of the, you know, the soldiering type of training. The deployments that we go on are, are hard. Sometimes they're hard on the family. And since 9-11, our operations tempo has increased so much. We've had m multiple deployments to Iraq and other locations in the Middle East. Um, it's given me the opportunity to go all over the world, really. Iraq, that, that's a, a very interesting place. Um, I deployed there in 2007. I was at Balad Air Base, and it was a very busy base. You do what we're doing here, but people are shooting at you. You know, we, we had a lot of rock and mortar attacks. The Balad Air Base is known as Mortaritaville. We actually had a pretty important role at the base as far as um, augmenting the hospital. They have a um, trauma center there that's an unbelievable trauma center. It was the main hospital for the entire theater, the entire country. And so anybody that was severely injured was medevaced into Balad. We would get a call. I would load up a pickup truck and grab as many EMTs as I had, usually about six or seven guys, and we would drive over to the uh, trauma center, put scrubs on, and uh, take care of patients in the emergency room. And sometimes they'd bring them in by the truckload or, or helicopters. We had a lot of Iraqi children 
a um, lot of civilians and occasionally insurgents that were injured in, you know, trying to set up IEDs that went wrong or got shot in battles. They'd come in and, and we would treat them like we treated anybody else. And, and mentally that was kind of tough to do. It was just hard to get over the emotion of, um, you know, this guy blew himself up trying to kill our people. But you treat them like a human being with dignity and, and we took care of them. One of the things that we dealt with a lot, like pretty much on a daily basis, was um, unexploded ordnance, where they would shoot something, it would stick in the dirt or in a building or something like that, it wouldn't explode. Mm. So the EOD team um, would respond with us and, you know, we would stand by or assist them in recovering these UXOs and then detonating them. So there was, there was a lot of that kind of work that we don't see in the city fire department. But other than that, it was pretty much the same. We went on, you know, fires of whatever type and uh, medical emergencies. You see some things on the movies where it may not portray our guys in the best light, you know, that is extremely rare. I mean, I never experienced anything like that. All of our people were compassionate and, um, you know, obeyed the rules of engagement. And we're all just trying to do the right thing. It would be hard for me to not do it since I've been doing it most of my life now, you know, since I was a teenager. It's just become part of me. Everybody that I work with is service-minded. That's why you do this.